Hey, y'all. Good morning, and welcome to Facebook Live Worship. This is the fifth Sunday of Easter, and this is a joint service between Marsh Memorial United Methodist Church and Court Street United Methodist Church in Lynchburg, Virginia. And today we are at Marsh Memorial. Uh, please contact us on Facebook or at marshmemorialumc.com or at courtstreetmethodist.com. We'd love to hear from you. We have a few continuing requests this morning. We need to continue to pray for Artie Smith, uh, for Sylvia and Marshall Shuff, and for Jim Puckett. And I would like for everyone to pray for the Pillow family at the passing of Eleanor Pillow. And we also need to pray for all of those that suffer from the coronavirus. Let us pray. God of power and majesty, with the rising of the sun, you have raised Jesus Christ and delivered him and us from death's destruction. We praise you on this bright day for all your gifts of new life. Especially we thank you for all victories over sin and evil in our lives, for your loyalty and love of friends and family, for renewal of nature and for the continuing witness of the Church of Christ. God of eternity, we bring you our prayers for the world in need of resurrection. We pray for nations and people in strife, for poor and impoverished, for the diseased and dying, and for all who follow the risen Christ. It is in his name that we pray. Amen. Amen. And now we have some special music for you this morning. We encourage you to join us in singing these hymns. I'm sure most of you are familiar with them. The first is In the Garden. If you have hymnals with you, it's number 314. The second is Leaning on the Everlasting Arm, number 133.
Thank you for that beautiful music. Let us now pray. Gracious God, give us humble, teachable, and obedient hearts that we might receive what you have revealed and do what you have commanded. Amen. For this for the scripture for this morning on this Mother's Day, I have chosen a scripture from Matthew, chapter 19, verses 13 through 15. Then children were about to him that he might lay his hands on them and pray. The disciples rebuked the people, but Jesus said, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, for to such belongs the kingdom of heaven. And he laid his hands on them and went away. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thank Thanks be to God. This is Mother's Day, and I want to wish all of you mothers a very happy Mother's Day. On Monday, my daughter reminded me that Mother's Day was today. I would have probably forgotten if she hadn't. And I started to think after she reminded me about what I should get my mother for Mother's Day and what I should get for my wife. And as I thought about it, I started thinking about some of my favorite memories about my mom what ways she influenced me the most and what I'm the most grateful for. And as I thought of these images that came into my head, I was surprised that I got a, a bit teary-eyed. I have a great mom. And her influence on my life in many ways directly related to why I enjoy a uh, of fulfilling life today. And I thought about those early memories. I remember my mom used to make sure that we all made it to church on Sunday morning. And I thought about all of the places she used to haul me and my brother and my sisters around in, in that old Chevrolet she had. She used to take us on rides on what we call the River Road down on Fallen River because it was so beautiful and it was, it was cool on hot summer days. And I also thought about my mother's faith in God, her understanding of God's grace. I thought about how she would make sure that we say a prayer every evening before we ate dinner together as family. And I remember as kids, we, we always sat on the front pew of the church. And I remember my mom giving people in the neighborhood rides to town to buy groceries and to go to the doctors because some of them didn't own cars. And I remember my mom making sure we said our prayers each night before we went to bed. And I can remember telling my mom in recent years that I wouldn't be a pastor if it wasn't for her. And of course with God, all things are possible. But my mother's influence in my life goes deeper than anything else that I know. By watching her, I learned what Christ's love looks like in action. And because of her, and of course my dad, I was in Sunday school and in worship, even when we were on vacation and gone somewhere. And even though my parents have flaws, just they just like any other human being, and even though the church is flawed because God chose to use the church and his people to be his body on this earth. My being has been shaped by my church, my family, and my friends. 
I wouldn't recognize myself if it were not for the church. I can't imagine who or what I'd be if it were not for the people of God. Did I rebel as a teenager? You bet I did. Can I be a real pain in the neck? Yep, I can. Am I a major sinner? There's no doubt about that. But I have the love of Jesus Christ in my heart. And the reason is because I know I'm loved by God no matter what. Am I happy? Yes. Because of my relationship with Jesus. Jesus is my foundation. Jesus is my life. But you might wonder, what about those who, who don't know Jesus, who don't have a relationship with them? What about those who have mothers who really don't care for their children? What about those that are living in crack houses or on the streets? What about the children that are growing up with the TV and the internet as their only role models? And what about those who are taught that the only way to happiness is through materialism and money? What about those surrounded by violence, addiction, abuse? And there are those too who only know the word Jesus as a swear word. What will happen to them? Where is their foundation? What will become of them as they grow up in a, a terribly difficult world? In our scripture passage this morning, we read that some people were bringing children to Jesus so he would place his hands on them and pray for them. But we're told the disciples scolded the people, bringing the children, and perhaps the children as well. But Jesus told the disciples, allow the children to come to me. Don't forbid them. Then he blessed the children and went away from them. And now we might ask ourselves, how could the disciples, the people who knew Jesus so well, fail to understand him? But I think the answer is very easy. And it can be a little embarrassing. I think the answer for all of us is to, to go find a mirror. Look into it. And that will help us to understand the disciples' misunderstanding. And the danger of being those who forbid the little children from coming to Jesus can sometimes hit close to home. How much positive attention do we give to our youth and to our children that we're blessed to have in our midst? And by the grace of God, I think our congregations are doing a pretty good job. But we can always do better. What are we doing about the children who are not among us? What can we do? What will we do? What would Jesus have us do? Perhaps we can be a shepherd a role model, just for a couple of hours a week, for children living in conditions that most of us couldn't even imagine. We are hoping and planning to continue our programs with the James Crossing kids and with the Heritage Elementary children when this pandemic is over. But I want you to think for a minute, what do you suppose it looks like for a child to have a person who represents Christ to come to them with a smile and maybe with some food asking for nothing in return. It could change their lives. And could it be similar to those children 
having Jesus place his hands on their head and bless them. What image of Christ and Christ church will stick in the minds of these children as they grow older and face life deciding decisions that we all have to face? We play a big part in that, either through our action or our inaction. In Luke chapter 17, verses 1 through 3, Jesus says, Things that cause people to sin are bound to come, but woe to that person to whom they come. It would be better for him to be thrown into the sea with a millstone tied around his neck than for him to cause one of these little ones to sin. So be careful. As Christ's body in Lynchburg, Virginia, we're called to go the second mile for everyone. We are transformed and changed and thus become more like Christ when we allow ourselves to be stretched out of our comfort zone, when we become involved in the lives of others. What this story about Jesus blessing the little children is telling us is that the body of Christ, as the body of Christ, we have a responsibility for the children in our community. We're called to bless them with the love of Jesus Christ. And how can we best do that? How can we change lives? How can we best be used by God to end the cycle of abuse, addiction, poverty, and unhappiness that so pervades our society? What can we do? I have an amazing mother who taught me about God's love and grace through her actions and her words. My guess is that many of you all did as well. If it wasn't for a mother or for a father, an aunt or a grandmother, someone helped you helped you to see Christ's love in action. And I want you to imagine those experiences and those persons who helped you and extract them from your experience. Who would you be? What would your life look like? Would you even recognize yourself? It is through, it, I mean, it is the thought of, of this that can sometimes be excruciating, hard to imagine. I know it is for me. I can't imagine what my life would look like. Jesus said, allow the little children to come to me. Don't forbid them. We all need to heed this call of Jesus Christ. Happy Mother's Day to all of you mothers out there, and happy Mother's Day to everyone. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we lift up our mothers on this day and ask that you hold them in your loving hands, showing them your love and tender mercy. We also pray for all the children of all the mothers who have lived and still live on this earth and ask the same for them. Keep all of us safe, make the sick well, and send us out to do your will. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. And now for an ending song for you, our closing hymn is What a Friend We Have in Jesus. It's number 526 in your hymn.
May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.